Hey guys, welcome back to another video. In this one, we have a very interesting horse who is a kill pen by horse. She's got some interesting behaviors. She ended up uh, kind of charging and attacking the owner and uh, leaving some nasty bite marks on her arm. She had a guy trying to help her ride her and uh, he ended up getting bucked off three or four times. And so we're gonna see what we need to do to help get this horse to be acting like a partner and uh, more comfortable with everything. Let's get into it. So I bought her in August and then in September we brought her in. You got her from a kill pen? Correct, in Texas. In Texas? Mm -hmm. yep. and were, always... were you thinking she was going to be a big project at that point or were you like, oh, she might be fine? She might be fine. <laughs> so what has happened to me three times I've tried to catch her is I'll go try to catch her in the middle of the pasture and she'll run around me, throw her head, and then she'll rear and just kind of be dominant towards me. Oh, wow. When we first got her the first week, she did bite me in my arm. I just like being in her stall, she was like, enough. I didn't okay. expect this um, behavior, the okay. dangerous behavior, but I have always wanted to buy from a kill pen. And you know, How old was she when you got her? She's four. Unhandled. After the kill pen, the only videos I got was a guy on her bareback in a halter, run up, run down. Oh. She looked... Not lame. Oh, and they were riding her. Wow. They did, yeah. And then mm -hmm. when she got delivered, the guy said, she's hard to catch, so I wouldn't take that halter off. So we, we worked with her. She was very skittish when we got her. She is very leery of men and very leery of anybody new. And then you sent her to a trainer? Yes. So he was okay. he's my farrier, and he was coming every Sunday to, okay. to work with her because um, he had some experience in the past, but not with behavioral issues. And we struggled there. Um, he fell off of her like three or four times. So How long ago was that then? December. Beginning oh, of December, so November. Oh, not short, a month ago mm -hmm. or so. All right. Well, I think we'll unload her. And okay. we'll, well, I think we'll just take her to the round pen and we'll start in there. Okay, perfect. Sounds, Sounds good. good. My farrier just tried last week to, to pull her out of the stall. No one was there to help. And um, she reared up in the stall and tried to bite him. Wow. And then... He, he grabbed her and t turned her out for us. He's like, I'm not dealing with her anymore. He's gonna okay. let the professionals handle her. And what's her name? Remy. Remy? Yes. I don't know if you see her eye, but that that eye worries me. Yeah, she's she's at a um, she teeters on being what I would call concerned or hyper alert, mm -hmm. and it's that's one step before panicked. Okay. And so she needs to she needs to be able to decompress. So when you're putting pressure on a horse and really asking them to move, it's kind of okay if they get a little bit concerned, um, because that's kind of the the mode that they operate in when they're doing something athletic. But when you're just asking her to walk a circle or stand there and they're at that state, she needs to relax more. She needs to come down and, and just uh, decompress. Mm -hmm. So there she's relaxing a little bit. See the lick and chew? Yeah. That's the first time since you've been in the round pen that she's kind of letting down. So just leave her be here. Okay. Uh, just kind of relax so all pressure and just let her cruise around. Also, like she kept stopping and facing you. Yes. And where that comes from, it could be that a horse doesn't know how to circle. But what I would what I was reading that as is more... When you have a horse that's feeling and acting like a prey animal, when a predator tries to tell them which way to go, they're designed to push back into that and not go that way. Cause it's like, she's assuming there's a trap. Okay. So just by asking her to go left or right, that causes them to want to go the other way. Um, and so she was, I don't think she was stopping just cause she didn't know what to do. It was more like, she's like, I don't know if I trust you enough to do this right now. Where now she's turning loose to it, she's relaxing and then she's happy to keep going that way. Okay. Does that make sense? Yes, it So does. we need her basically just overall right now, we need to get her to let down. Okay. But and if it's okay with you, I think I'll take her from here and no problem. see what we can get into. All right, you've had a chance to see this horse a little bit. Let me know in the comments if you think this horse is dominant or defensive. So. And that's where I get stuck with her is she faces me and I can't, I'm struggling reading her. Yeah. And she, she, in the video you sent me with the other dangerous horse, like I felt like that one decompressed. I don't feel like I've gotten there with her. Yeah, well, it's really good that just after a couple of circles, she was able to let down. Mm -hmm. But see what you just did there? I moved back like I no. was scared. You went. Oh, I breathed. <laughs> you breathed. Yeah, so you've been in here you've kind of buzzing. 
And then did you see what she just did? Yeah. She just took a deep breath too. Mm -hmm. So when you let down and relaxed, and that's what's challenging when you're a little bit afraid of them, mm -hmm. because like if she had kind of yeah. kind of came at you a few times, bit you, um, and and she's at a very high level, and you can tell that that's not the energy that you want to be around. But mm -hmm. that got you to have your energy up, and that's going to be harder for them to respond to than when you're fully fully relaxed. Okay. Um. So so you letting down there was really big too. Okay. Um, okay. But like you said, you are getting more results with her by going slow versus mm -hmm. somebody else going a little faster with her. Because she just she just needs to kind of understand everything a little better and, and kind of let down. And um, so what I'm going to do in this session is I'm going to try to just do an evaluation and kind of find out where her holes are and what she's needing the most. Okay. And um, I've had people complain that I do the same video over and over again. But what they're what they're kind of maybe missing is that um, it's a new horse and I'm diagnosing, so I'm just testing the same things, because there's only so many things. It's rhythmic motion, rhythmic pressure, accepting the human, steady pressure, speed, environment. Those are kind of the factors that could get you in trouble if the horse is not accepting one of those things, right. accepting the saddle, accepting the bit. Um, that's that's kind of it right there. And so what I want to know is like, she actually does not seem bothered by the environment, which is cool, because mm -hmm. you just got here. Um, she seemed to be giving to the halter pretty well. Mm -hmm. So that's steady pressure, that's cool. We got to test that a little more thoroughly. Um, we got to see, is she mostly afraid of the human? Is she mostly afraid of rhythmic pressure or the driving pressure? Um, and we just got to get to know her a little bit and find out what, when things went wrong with the other guy riding her, it's like we need to kind of diagnose what happened and how can we improve that in a safe way on the ground so that when Jake gets on her, um, it goes a little bit, goes a little bit smoother. So um, for those of you watching, um, I'm going to do this first session. I talked Jake into letting me do the first evaluation uh, with this horse. And um, so he's letting me do that. And then he's going to continue training the horse. And so you guys are going to be able to go over to Pear Tree Ranch uh, YouTube channel. And he's going to be doing a series as this horse is here in training. I think she's here three months. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Um, so that'll be a fun, fun uh, series to follow. And uh, I just get to hear and be the first, first, first one. Um, Thank you. And then we'll go from there. So. All righty. And that's one thing I did notice about her is she finds release away from me. Yeah, and you see how in, she got intimidated, you know, by me being yeah. new right away. Mm -hmm. And so she's just a little more skeptical, um, you know, kind of basic prey animal. Okay. What we do need to kind of understand is how well she understands pressure and okay. um, kind of what level of training she does have. Mm -hmm. um, because it's like, if she, it's it makes sense. If, if you have a Mustang that's never been handled, well, it makes sense they're going to be skeptical of people, right? Like right. they don't know any better. But the ones that are innately more gentle, very quickly they start to accept people and things click along pretty quick. If she's had a lot of training and is still this kind of snorty and, and alert, that's not a great sign because that means she's a pretty high level, meaning high spirited prey animal, right? That takes more time, a little more work. If it's like she's this skeptical because she really just hasn't had that much time in handling with people, then she should hopefully make some adjustments a little bit quicker as, as we go. And so yeah, I'm just gonna test out a few things here. And because she's looking at me a little bit cross-eyed, um, you wanna, you wanna, we wanna bring out her curiosity a bit. And um, I'm gonna use the sandwich theory, <laughs> which means you start off with some good things, then we're gonna do some hard things in the middle, and then we're gonna finish on some softer things, right? So it's like, there's some harder tests I'm gonna give her in this session, but I'm not gonna start with that. Like, I just met, I'm just meeting her, right? So I might as well just kind of walk around, let her get to know me a little bit. Because as soon as you handed the rope over to me, she went, <sighs> Mm -hmm. and, and when, I don't know about this guy because she had kind of gotten settled with you, but she's not settled with me yet. Mm -hmm. And um, so, and you, you said you had said that, that she seemed to be more intimidated by men. Right. Um, mm -hmm. And she's very leery on the right side. Okay. And you can see that like right there, just walking. She put me on her left side. Mm -hmm. So I'll go ahead and pivot. Like she kind of cut me off there. So I'll go ahead and pivot and go this way. Just let her follow me around. And what I'm looking for is to turn her skepticism into curiosity. So see how her nose is kind of angled away there? Oh, see there, it went to curiosity. Oh, she met me. Again, good sign, because it's like, what one of the, I don't necessarily judge a horse by how dramatic of a move they do. Any horse can do one big move. It, the question to me is how committed are they to it? Are they gonna do it over and over and over again? Are they really stuck on that thing? And that's, that's kind of when you know it's more of an issue. Her just not knowing something or being unsure of a new person, that's a pretty reasonable you know, thing to, thing to have. Um, again, especially we don't know, because she came from a kill pen, we don't know how much handling you know, she's really have. Um, she's warming up to me here a little bit. And if I had to guess, just first glance, 
it seems pretty obvious to me that some of the issues you were having at feeding time and her biting were probably her being defensive. Mm -hmm. She was probably being defensive, not dominant. Okay. Horses can be either one. A lot of people like to write off things and say they're always scared and always defensive. It's not true. Horses can be dominant because they care about dominance in the pasture. And it makes sense that once they get comfortable enough with a human, they could also be test the boundaries there too and go, well, can I push you around? You know, one of the first basic lessons that people learn as a, a horse owner is to try to not move your feet first. Try to move the horse's feet first because horses can start to move your feet. But I would say so far with her, it's pretty obvious to me. It's, it's mostly that she uh, could be defensive if we went too fast. So if she was dominant, me retreating away from her is in a minute, she'd be eating my lunch. Okay. If it was dominant, she'd be like, oh, well, this guy's just walking away and, and this and that. But if she's scared and is defensive, I'm gonna build her confidence and get her curious by going away. Because you guys, have, if you've watched my channel for a while, you've seen many videos where I get a call for a horse that has become food aggressive. And the first thing I do is own my space and get the horse to step off, not walk away from him. But you, it's all about reading the horse and seeing those little things there um, as we go. Hey, what would you guys think about having me as your horsemanship coach or mentor? I can do that on my Patreon page. We have a full series of training videos on there. I post a new video every week. You can ask me questions about your horse and even send videos for coaching. Uh, we do a giveaway once a month. I think you guys are gonna love it. Go check it out. We'll leave a link in the description below. Let's get back to the video. So you can see how defensive she is there. Mm -hmm. So now because I started this move, I'm gonna maintain my position. There she got curious about it. So I'll let her smell it and then I'll take it away. What, what could get you in trouble, where I could push her into being too defensive is if I just keep going or go, go faster. So this is the hard part for people that are learning. If I, put, if I get to here and she retreats back and she says, I'm actually comfortable here. If I let her do that and then I retreat it and I teach her that over and over again, I'm just teaching her to get scared of something and then it goes away. I don't want her to get learn that, but I also don't want to tip her over the edge and scare her and get her defensive. And I would do that by by her, if she, if my response was when she went to retreat is I moved faster and said, no, I'm gonna be able to touch you with this. Well, that would tip her over the edge. And you see now, now we're okay with it. And so when I find that, we call that a threshold. We found that threshold and what you try to do is maintain your position, whatever distance that is. It could be this far, it could be this far. You know, if I'm approaching and she retreats, let's see if we can get it to happen again. She's retreating, I'm gonna move my feet just enough to maintain. She got okay with it, it goes away. So more than anything else, we're teaching her how to be a learner. We're teaching her that when you try and put effort into our idea and being comfortable with something, it'll go away. If I, if, like I said, if I approach her and she retreats and then I take it away, I'm teaching her the opposite. I'm teaching her, you get scared of something, we'll leave you alone, yeah. <laughs> we'll go away. And that's not gonna work for training. So there's a, there's a sweet spot right there in the middle that when you're experienced with horses, you can, you can operate there and make progress um, without tipping them over the edge, but also without just teaching them to be, you know, I don't want to sneak around her. So uh, I'm just kind of finding where that, what that comfort level is. Someday, Jake will be challenging her with that and he'll start moving a little faster and, and moving around her with, with um, more energy to get her to have higher tolerances of that. But at the beginning stage here, I just want to teach her that there is a, a language and a conversation that I know how she feels in those moments. See, that was really good. She let me come on this side. There she retreated. So again, I just maintain here. She, her leg was cocked, she got relaxed, I'll take it away. And sometimes you can retreat just by taking it away. Other times, if I wanna do like a bigger release or retreat, I'll actually just walk all the way away from her here. And this is a little bit slow and boring um, at first with a horse like this because I don't need to get in a hurry with what I'm doing. I'm just kind of building, more than anything right now, I'm building rapport with her. Um, the respect part comes when you start asking them to yield to pressure. But right now, I just want her to think I'm not that bad of a guy, you know? And then that's why I'm just gonna spend a little time there, building rapport, I'm gonna take her out to lunch. <laughs> Before asking if I can borrow her car. <laughs> oh, see there, she got a little bothered. She goes, I'm scared. So again, I'm gonna maintain. So that pressure doesn't go away just because you got a little bothered. I'm not gonna go faster. You get okay with it, it can go away. 
And then what's cool about retreating and going all the way away like this is I can then reapproach each time. Because it seems like what bothers her more is the approach of the pressure versus uh, once it's there and she's okay with it. But it's like, to me, this is something that's very obvious and I'm pretty sure Jake would agree. I mean, if she's scared of me approaching her with an extension of my arm to touch her, we're not ready to ride. Right. <laughs> we're a ways away from riding her because it's a recipe to get into trouble. And one of the things I say all the time is horse training is 50, 50, 50% 50 of the time. We're trying to not teach them things. We don't want them to know, like get scared with the rider on her back. The other 50% of the time we're trying to teach them things. That's not 90, 10, 37. It's 50, 50. Like, I think as much about trying to not teach them things I don't want them to know as much as I do thinking about things I want them to know. And that's what I mean by why we would go slower and build confidence here. Because if we're having trouble here, it makes sense that if we try to pull saddle out, um, you're gonna, gonna run into more issues. So on a horse like this, you're just better off taking the time to get them settled and gentle. And what that does is it gives you some more margin for error that when you are sitting on her, if something bothers her, because if you go perfectly slow and you're in the same space and um, everything's okay and all the conditions are perfect, it might work out. But what if some dog comes running out of the barn or the woods <laughs> that you weren't expecting or the neighbor decides to start shooting some fireworks off? Mm -hmm. You don't know what could happen that might be out of your control that would bother them and now you, they got scared because it happened while you were on them. Does that make sense? Yes. And so we got to have some more room for error, mm -hmm. especially guys like us that ride a lot of really challenging horses, start a lot of colts. You get in a habit, like, you know, I'm not trying to be a bronc stomper here where you just get ride them through it and then they get okay with it because they're still going to be tough to catch, still going to have all these holes. Right. Um, so it's not about riding her. It's about just getting her to chill out, like see how much, you know, how yeah. she's getting quieter. Yeah. It's about teaching her to just be a, a tame, gentle, settled horse. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yes. Yes. Rather than like pe the way people think is we got our list and we go, well, he, he rode her, he didn't ride her. He cantered her, he didn't canter her. You know, does that make, he wrote her outside the pen, he didn't, you know, right. like we like these like hard checkoff things. When you learn to become a horseman, you don't think of those things. You think of, is, is there a partnership happening between me and the horse? Do they trust me in what I'm doing? Will they yield to pressure with, in different ways that I ask them to? If those two things are good, everything else becomes possible. Right. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So now we'll just up the ante a little bit. Uh, one thing I like is when she does get scared, she, she retreats away, but she doesn't leave. Okay. When she did get by, like, um, I had a horse this fall that like, when it would get bothered, it didn't just like retreat backwards. It would just whirl away, pull away and be gone. And that's like a you know, more extreme reaction to things. And that's a lot harder to deal with than a horse that goes, I'm a little, I'd, I'd like to know where they're at. So when they're honest with me and they're like, I'm not sure about that. Mm -hmm. And they just was like, okay, I see that you're bothered by that. But I like that she didn't try to just commit to leaving, you know? Right. There's a big, big, big difference in there, you know? So Jake is asking me to touch on um, that idea that this horse is honest. Because sometimes you, you'll see people say, well, this horse is honest, this one's not honest. And what that means is she's telling us how she's feeling very obviously in her movement. Some horses are more introverted and they'll just stand there. And if you really know how to read a horse, you can see little things like they quit blinking, they quit moving their lips. Um, their head elevated, you could see their muscles flex and tense up. Those are real subtle signs that, but it's really common people say, we're, every, we're riding along, I say, what happened? You know, I got, I got bucked off my horse, what happened? I don't know, all of a sudden this happened. And it's like, it's never all of a sudden. Right. I mean, it's always like, first they noticed that scary thing and the person kept going, then they tensed up, their head elevated, you know, and that could all happen really quickly. But what we are appreciating about her is she's telling us how she feels right away okay. by just trying to do these subtle little retreats moving away. And that's a much better response than either completely bolting away or by hiding it more internally and not knowing where they're at. It's like a person who's upset with you and not, instead of going and talking to you about it, they just stew on it. It's like, it'd be better if they just went ahead and said, hey, when you said that to me, I didn't appreciate it. Right. <laughs> you, know, you, can, you can get over it and move on past that a lot easier than somebody who just hides in and says, I'm gonna write this person off and never speak to him again. Right. <laughs> you know, right. it's like, well, that's not really gonna do anybody any good, you know? So well, I'm about to finish the first part of the sandwich effect here of kind of doing some slower things. And what we're gonna alternate to is 
um, some yields. So I like to switch between some confidence building and some yielding. So we're gonna alternate now to some yields. And you need both. A lot of people would love it to be true that if you just have time, patience, petting them, and some cookies, they'll get trained. And it's not that simple. It, it, you, know, you can get a long ways with a lot of horses using those things. And yes, it does require those things, but it also requires um, being able to ask the horse to yield and give in different ways for the farrier, for the vet to work on them, for hauling them, for saddling them, for riding them. You know, it, they have to get the, that's, you don't, you'd be missing more than half the puzzle if you just did those, those things. Right. So the next game I'm gonna play with her is a little hindquarter yield game. And I'm calling it a game because I don't want her to just yield her hindquarters, I want her to put me in that other eye. Okay. So I said to myself, what does she need to do to win the game? She needs to put me in her right eye. So I'm not gonna quit yielding your hindquarters on this side until you see me out of that eye. Now, if she had never heard of this game, maybe I would have quit when her foot moved or something, but she knows the game a bit. I'm just taking it to the next level where I'm getting those two eyes because we've identified that she can be a little more defensive on the right side than the left side. There's a deep breath, so I'll go ahead and, and retreat on that. And then another thing that I've, I've kind of mentioned, but I'll just say it again here, you're gonna see me retreat and go away from her a lot. This is building draw. This horse does not need a lot of drive pushing her away. Okay. So even that hind quarter yield had a bit of a draw feel. Again, you see her block me on the side. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so I'm gonna walk over here and just spend a little bit of time over here. But I may not even wave the stick. I, may, I might just make a little hybrid version of this game and I might just walk around here. And I'll, instead of driving her with the stick, cause she's scared of me more on this side, I'll just use the halter and I'll just spend some time here. So instead of just yielding a little bit and stopping, I just kind of want her to wear the, see there, she, she kind of wore the pressure. Yeah. So I was putting a little pressure on her with my eyes and my focus, and she kind of just stopped and, and stayed there. And now I'll reach up and pet her. Ooh, he touched me. Versus driving her on this side. Gotcha. So I drove her on the other side for her to put me in the right eye. And then on this side I went, let's make this just a little bit sweeter by just being over here. And then I actually quit when she stopped trying to block me on that side. So this is why it's really hard to write a rule book on training horses. Right. <laughs> because just in one yield of a hindquarter yield, I, for me personally, I would do it differently on each side. On this side, I'm going to drive her and I want her to yield. So I'm a little bigger, a little more noisy until right there, she put me in the right eye. On this side, I'm walking and I'm putting a feel with the halter until she wears it like that. That's how she wins the game on this side and then lets me pet her. One of the things that Jake says a lot that I, I like is he'll say a horse can only do, was it eight things? Eight things. Stand still, forwards, backwards, left, right, up, down, stand still. He throws stand still in there twice. And a lot of people undervalue how important a stand still is. If you're trying to walk around to do her feet or groom her or saddle her from that side, she needs to stand still. So if she's always turning and putting you in that eye, well, it's going to be hard to do anything over there. So we got to get a stand still there before we need anything else. Is that all making sense? Yes, yes. All right, so I'm gonna switch gears here and grab my flag. So we did a yield, now we'll do a little confidence thing. I'm also aware, if you wanna get real nerdy about this, I did a driving yield. So when I switch back to another yield, I'm gonna do a steady pressure yield. Which means you have a physical connection to the horse and you're asking them to give to a steady feel. Rhythmic pressure is, you may touch them, but it's, it's one, two, three, four, it's not like steady on there. And those are the two types of pressure a horse has to get yield to. And if you watch my videos, you hear me talk all the time about, I think steady pressure is actually harder for them to yield to, to give to, because innately they're designed that if they're scared, run away from you know the hungry lion. Um, but to give to pressure and come to it and yield to steady pressure is a lot harder sell to the horse. And if you don't believe me, Let's have a competition. You have a Mustang with a halter and lead rope on it, mm -hmm. and I'll have a Mustang and a flag, <laughs> and we'll have a race and see who can get their horse to the other side of the arena. <laughs> you know, I'll just go like that and mine will run down there. You try to lead them, the first thing they're gonna do is push back into it, run backwards and possibly flip over if you pull too hard. Right. Um, because they're, they're designed as a little baby foal. If you feel something on top of your pull, to pull back into it. And a lot of people end up like flipping foals over when they're halter starting them. Um, because they don't, they're not aware of how sensitive they are to that spot. That spot's already pre-designed pre in there, you know? It's yeah. not like somebody taught them that. It's like, 
they're prey animals and that's what they know to do is fight and push through the pressure. <clears throat> Even like putting, doing things like putting leg uh, ropes on their legs and teaching them to follow a feel. I've had that bail me out of trouble more than once where their foot got caught in something on a trail ride and they stepped in some wire or a branch even um, or a hay net. You know, I was at a clinic and I had this horse get all tangled up in a hay net after we had done a bunch of the uh, rope stuff with their legs, getting them to follow a feel. And that horse just stood there and didn't pull back at all. We were able to cut it away until it got freed up. Nice. Fun little note, I'm gonna throw this in there. Drives me nuts. If you hang a hay net and it's filled with hay and it's up this high, or say the bottom of the bag is here. When that bag is empty, it's gonna be laying on the ground. Put your hay nets up high, folks, <laughs> okay? Because when you have it down low, it's just a recipe if they paw it and get their shoe hung up in it, or if they get it wrapped around their legs. Horses are great at getting into trouble. So be safer, put your hay net up high, factor in that it's gonna come down more when it's empty. Just pro tip there. So this is better than I was expecting. Oh, and this is all great. She wants to be calm. Like she wants to get along, wants to be, wants to, to do this stuff. This is good. So like one of the things I saw you do is when you went to back her up, you did this mm -hmm. and that's, that's fine. But my preferred way to get started with the backup is from the halter. Cause that's fine. feeling. you see how skeptical she is of this. This is a much tougher yield to get is either head down. There we go. And also allows you to spend more time kind of in close range with her, you know, cause she's a little more guarded uh, when I'm in close here compared to when, see how she doesn't know, understand that one yet, that steady pressure yield. And you see the resistance of yeah. her tossing her head. So that's why that one's a really important one. Follow a feel off that halter. There you go. But she, she wants to be trainable. This right? is good. This is all really good news. She's got a lot softer eye than when she does with me, but she might just be reading me. Well, there, it's really great that you've sent her here to Jake for training, because I, I, this is not a horse just off the cuff here that I, I would think a person would just do their own training on unless they're a professional. Right. Um, like, because you could easily do something too quick and misread it and get into trouble. But what's good is she is train, you know, she is more trainable. Like, I, I don't think she's gonna be the super, super difficult horse that's like, you know, a year in and she's still wild. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, but it, she does need to, it to go about it in the right way. She's not super easy either. Agree. But some horses are willing to try for you and get on board with your idea. And some horses are just really committed to being a prey animal. And that's much more challenging. And she, she just does kind of, what I'm discovering is she kind of just doesn't know. Cause mm -hmm. like she gets on board with my idea pretty quickly mm -hmm. um, so far. See, it's amazing that somebody's trimmed her feet when you go to rub it and she gets bothered just with that. So when I talk about a horse getting used to steady pressure, thank you, sir. Steady pressure, there's steady pressure as a yield and then there's steady pressure as like just a feel. So like if a farrier is holding up their hoof, I guess they're yielding it up in the air, but once it's up in the air, it's now just a feel to hold, right? And so you want to, in the saddle, that's steady pressure all around their barrel. And they, it's just a feel that they need to be okay with and accept that, that pressure. And so what I'm going to do with the layer rope now is instead of it being a yield, it's going to be just a, a pressure of, can you wear this? Can you just be okay and tolerate it being on you? Um, and we'll make it easy at first. We'll just throw it over her back here. We'll just ask her to walk around with that. And I like when it just kind of touches them in random places. Well, that's boring. Let's go ahead and make it a little bit more challenging. And for me, this is just part of my colt starting prep. It doesn't take long. If they're a gentle horse, they get, on, they get over this in a minute or less. If they're a little more uh, skeptical, a little bit scared of it, it might take a little bit longer and uh, that's okay. And then it was more worthwhile doing it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So I do it as a test and if, it go, if I don't have any issues, I move on. If I have some issues, well, then I know I'm like, well, good thing I tried that, <laughs> you know. So right now it's just the weight of the rope wearing it, but then I'm going to actually put a feel on it. So 
So now I just, I want her to wear it, which means I want her to just walk around and just not change anything just because this is, is on you. So you see, she got tight at first and then she accepted it really quickly. This is what I'm referring to why I go, she, yeah, she's coachable. Like okay, this is, good. this is all, all good, good signs. Just to be thorough, I'm gonna go ahead and do that on the other side and then we're gonna put it on her legs. So this is kind of a combo. Um, no, sir. Confidence building <laughs> slash getting used to steady pressure. And if you didn't know, it's kind of like horses have two, two brains. You gotta train the, the left side and the right side equally. Just because you do something on one side doesn't mean they're okay on the other side. Really good. That's super. So there's nothing there, you know? It's like, not that it hurts to do it, but that all went pretty good. Another little test with a horse that, she's pretty committed to blocking on this side. Mm -hmm. Another little test is I'm gonna walk over here. I like that, she, she let me in. She turned her head the other way, gave me permission to come in here, that's good. What I was gonna show is that if I'm here and I switch side, go to switch sides and she didn't do that, you can use your hand and just kind of lift your hand and wait for them to step off. It's a very different feeling and experience for a horse if they choose to step into position or move into position versus I just go around her head and get into position by me moving my feet. Does that make sense? Yes. Um, and so those, it's just a little thing, but it can go a long ways with a horse like this. I, it needs to be her choice to allow us over there, not just we, we made it where she had to let us over there. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna modify this, make it a little bit easier for her. If I were to put this part around her, it would come tight on her leg and that would be more scary than just me having it on one side of her leg and then giving it a little feel here. But baby foals are very defensive around their head and especially their pole and then around their limbs, their legs. They're very protective of those areas. So it's like, you could say, well, I'm getting her ready for the farrier and that'd be true, but I'm also getting her ready to ride by yielding her feet. Okay. And that, you know, for a lot of people that don't know horses, that doesn't make sense. But when you understand that they're, when I see that she's protective of her legs, if I can get her to get more comfortable with me around her legs, even though you never said there's a farrier issue, I'm doing this to make her safer for Jake to ride. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because mm -hmm. if she can turn loose to us being all over her body and doesn't have any can't, can't don't touch me there spots then we're we're, we're we got a better uh, a safer more tame more gentle horse and i would also say that a lot of what we're doing here is a little bit more around taming i don't think i've really found anything that i said oh she doesn't know this at all it's more like somebody did this with her but it was a little bit quicker where they didn't wait the relaxation and the confidence enough in my opinion um, so she knows the yields but she needs to get more relaxed in those yields and that equals a more tame horse. Okay. So training is if I taught her the yield, you know, teaching them a move. I'm not teaching her a move right now, I'm just getting her to be gentle, mm -hmm. you know. Does that make sense? Yes. So baby foals, Mustangs, a lot of kill pen horses, <laughs> they need more taming before they get trained. And that is, like you were saying, like you said, you know, I've sat on her, you saw her, uh, somebody ride her in the kill pen, but then the trainer, the guy that rode her for you got bucked off a few times. Um, even though somebody rode her, it's not like I'm gonna to try to get on her and just be extra quiet and let her let me have her let me ride her. It's like, no, we're gonna get her gentle where she would kind of let anybody ride her, you know. So I have the leader up on so that if I need to, if she got really worried, I could have a safety net there. Mm -hmm. But you can see I'm trying to get the foot in the air and then place it. When horses' feet are in the air, that's when they're shapeable. And that's a good tip for when you're riding and teaching stopping, lead changes, you know, different moves, spins. Um, the timing is such that you do it when the foot is in the air. But I like her. I think she's, uh, I think she's gonna be a good horse for you. Thank you. She's not gonna be like, she's, she's not gonna be, horses are born with a disposition mm -hmm. and you can only modify their disposition about 20%, okay? And so she's going to be a bit of a skeptical horse. Um, she's innately what we call more right-brained. Okay. But there's a lot of room for training here. Like yeah. she wants to be coachable. She probably just ha hasn't had really the opportunity, you know? Right. And that's what, uh, kudos to you 
for taking her on and uh, being willing to send her to Jake's for three months and really put that training in uh, that she needs. That'll make it safer for you and, and make her a better horse in the long run. And I'm just a big believer in adding value to horses um, through training. You know, one of the best things we can do for our horses to help them never end up in a kill pen again is put training into them. Um, Cause we're adding value to that horse through the training. You know, you don't see a lot of high level dressage horses in the kill pen or reining horses, you know what I mean? Right. It's like, it's a lot of times it's horses that are hard to catch, can't really ride them, you know. So you can see this leg's a little bit tougher here. So mm -hmm. I'm just kind of following her here with it. It'd be real easy for me to get this on her if I built a loop to catch her with it. Mm -hmm. um, but I'd rather just take the time here and let her, let her get okay with it here. But one of the things that those of you watching this video, I hope you take away is not, not specifically the techniques I'm doing with this horse. I hope you take away more of like how to read the horse and identify what that horse needs. Because if you can start there, if you're able to read a horse really well, you're gonna get along with a lot more horses. Because if you're misreading them and you're thinking she's dominant or you're thinking you need to go faster or something like, you're just, you better pack a lunch. It's gonna be a long, long day okay. out there. Um, but you can see we're getting her to turn loose and get more comfortable with things. Um, and you know, she, she doesn't need me to saddle her and try to mount bareback and do all this stuff to, to hype up the video. It's like, she, this is what she needs today is just get gentler, accept humans. We, we said she's a little more scared of men, you know, not being in a big hurry. Um, she's only a four year old, you know, we got lots of time. Um, and uh, that's kind of kind of where she's at. Um, the only other thing I might do with her, so basically she needs training. Yes. It's like, I think it's more lack of, mm -hmm. and uh, she just needs the right approach with the right speed where it's not about um, being in a hurry to just get a road, you know? Okay. Um, it's, it's teaching her to be a good learner and getting her to be more tame. That's yes. steps kind of one and two, right? Mm -hmm. Then it's training, which is now the riding and that sort of thing. Okay. Um, and that's exactly what Jake's gonna do with her, you know? I'm excited. Yeah. So the only thing I'm gonna do just for fun is you said she's hard to catch. So I'm gonna teach her a little game um, and I'm gonna teach her that there's pressure on the outside of that circle and that the answer is to come to me. So you see when I put pressure on her here, she circles away from me and there she looked at me with two eyes, the pressure's gonna go away. So just a little subtle catching game here because she's letting me walk up to her, that's part of catching. We, you know, we've tried to get her a little more tame and gentle with things touching her, but there's two sides to the coin. There's what can I do to get her sweet and wanting to be here, but then there's the other side of the coin is teaching her that it's uncomfortable to be out there. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yes. When you do both of those, you have a better result. When you only do one, you only teach a horse that it sucks to be away from you and it's relief in, that's only one side of the coin. If, they still, if, if you're not making it a good thing for them to be here, they're not really gonna to wanna to be there tomorrow, even though you made it really clear it's, it's hot lava out there. But, but if you only just stand here and give them treats, she's not learning that it's uncomfortable to be out there, she's only learning that it's good to be here. If you can do both of those at the right times, um, kind of in the right sequence, you really are gonna have a great result with it. Does that make sense? Yes. So like, like there again, I walk away and then she stays, she stays stalled out. And so I'm just gonna kind of move away and just drift away. And I'm kind of pretending that I'm at liberty with her here. And I'm waiting for her to kind of leave, you know, to think about uh, putting me somewhere else. So there she's blocking a little bit. So we'll get her started on a circle because that was a little bit defensive. So that's where I'll add the pressure. And now that she's out there, and you'll notice my feet are kind of backing away from her the whole time. And yes, I'm touching her with the string. She's gonna be okay. And what I'm looking for is either two eyes or for her to just hustle and to put a little more effort into getting closer to me. And that's how she's gonna win this game. When it starts taking, there, two eyes. So she got more confident to look at me with both eyes. I'll take that pressure away. This is the part where now I'm showing her it was relief here. And you can pet them if they're okay with that. 
If I felt like me petting her was a little bit scary to her, you'd better off just standing here, just letting them be in here with you. And to be honest, like you could use treats with a horse like this, but most of my experience has been horses that are innately more right-brained, treats don't really matter. They, they, she, they're not that high in the priority list. She wants to feel safe and comfortable before she'll focus on food. And that's also why if a horse is worried or even a dog, if the environment is such that they're worried in it, they'll go off food right away. It can be a problem. It can be really stressful to the owner when they're not, it's like they're, they quit eating. It's like, well, they have a stomach ache or they're a little stressed or scared. And so food is not as big a priority as we'd like to think it is for some horses' personalities. There is one specific horse personality that really likes food, um, but three quarters of them, it's not that high on the priority list. Just like people. some. Food on my priority list, very high. <laughs> Another person, you know, they're like, eh, I'm okay. I'm like, well, you're not the best travel buddy. I was looking for you to say, we well, want to stop for some, some lunch, you know? <laughs> you know. So she's learning when she's at the end of that halter, there's gonna be a little pressure there, a little hot lava. She made a move to get a little closer, I'll release her. But then she went to put me in a defensive position. See how she took, she came in and took an angle away I don't know, we're not playing that game. That's a defense, she was in a defensive mindset, so I, I went back that direction and signed her up to facing me. Um, and those, again, those are those little moves that make the difference of her re learning that we know how you're feeling in that moment. And we're focusing on releasing on softness, not defensiveness or brace. Gotcha. Is that all making sense? It is. Any uh, questions about what we're doing here? No, I think it's more me just learning how you're reading her, because I would get stuck with her looking at me like that. I guess, because that's the mode that she was in when she attacked me, I guess. But it, I, it's me not being able to read it. I see. And then as she gets more comfortable, we'll start releasing her in other positions. But see, see that, how she takes that angle? So I'll just do a little move just so I'm not releasing her on one eye. I want both eyes. And then as, as we progress more and more, um, with what Jake's gonna be doing with her, you'll find him releasing her here more and more, because especially we'll spend a lot of time in this area because this is where you're gonna ride from. Mounting, saddling, riding, all happens from there. So they have to get comfortable with us all the way around them. Mm -hmm. uh, but I'm starting at a starting point of like, well, if I'm gonna catch you, I need you to be comfortable looking at me with two eyes, and then I need you to be comfortable with me here by your neck, you know? Do you feel like she's getting more defensive now since you're doing a few more things yes. that she's looking? Okay. Yes because I'm driving her now. So instead of me just uh, being sweet and petting her, now I'm adding pressure and I'm trying to teach her that it's actually a little harder for you to be out there than right here. See how she came up to me a little bit more matter of factly that time? Mm -hmm. I like that, that was good. Good girl. She just, she's getting a little more committed to coming in closer. Um, where before it was like her first response was to always back up and retreat. Now, again, you're not gonna always back up and retreat. It's just kind of where we started today. It's like tomorrow, it might be a little different because um, she tries quite a bit and I could see where she could get a little bit testy of pushing things and, and stuff like that eventually. And every horse can. Um, and so you do gotta be mindful of how much drawing you do. Again, if you watch my other videos, you'll see somewhere I'm driving them away and that's the first thing and the most important thing we do with her today. If you go back to the first clip of what happened when you handed me the rope, she backed up and went, what was this guy here, right? Mm -hmm. So I, the main focus was kind of me being able to make friends with her, going away from her building confidence. And uh, she's settled and relaxed. She's noticing flies on her now, which is also a good sign, because that's comfort. Uh -huh. I don't like that fly on me. Makes if sense. you have a horse that's real scared, they'll stand there and they'll let flies crawl across their eyeball wow. and they won't blink. They're just like, <laughs> you, know, you know, scared and nervous. She's got her head down, she looks soft, she looks like she could take a nap here. That's a great first way to kind of start things off. Yeah. So every time you halter or lead your horse, you're training. Mm -hmm. And so if, if she was on my place and I wasn't the only one handling her, I would have everybody aware that when, the, when you're going to interact with this horse, we're training, even if you're cleaning out the pen. Mm -hmm. You know, if somebody goes in to clean out the pen and she gets scared and goes away, I might just have them follow it until they look at her with two eyes. They'll look at them with two eyes and then back away. Okay. Does that make sense? You're training the whole time. So if you're leading her and she's giving you the side eye, I might play that little hind quarter yield game. I might face her and back up and draw her in, you know, and, and just redirect that thought to a more positive one, which when she's at a concerned or hyper alert state 
and she looks at you with two eyes and two ears forward, that's curious. That's a much, that's a better state to be in because mm. that's the left brain side of her coming out more and more. Oh, okay. Does that make sense? Yes. Yep. So and you're training. I was always reading that as I'm going to eat you. <laughs> Just well, because of. Well, again, if she's really bothered, they can get, when there's levels, right? So we've talked about curious, concerned, and there's levels below curious too. You got to watch my other videos for that. Curious, concerned, hyper alert, panicked, and there's one level above panicked. And panicked and threatened can be alternating depending on the horse or which one they choose to go to. Panicked or threatened. When a horse feels threatened, that's when they'll come after you. So there's probably times that she felt threatened and that's where she went to, to, okay. to bite. Yeah. And again, people don't believe me on this, <laughs> but you, if, you go, if you have a pen of Mustangs in a big arena and you go in there to feed them, there's a somewhat decent chance that one of those Mustangs that's the herd leader in the group, will come out of the herd and go after you, feeling like you're threatening the herd. Hmm. And you think, well, they'd all just run away and jump out of the fence. Not if they feel threatened. And maybe it was you move too fast in there, maybe just how you, you know, interacting. Um, but they can feel threatened very quickly, you know, or they can switch and they can feel comfortable very quickly and decide to, you know, if, if you've not been driving them away because they were scared of you the whole time, um, if all you did was walk away from them and never drove them out of your space, they can switch to feeling and testing the waters there and going, actually, can I boss you around? Like all it takes is for them to get comfortable enough to do that and they can switch to doing that. And that's why there's videos on horses kicking us and biting and, and going forward towards us and also horses getting threatened. The difference is understanding which one it was it. Were they being dominant or were they being threatened, uh, defensive? Because if you're misreading it, you're going to do completely the wrong things. Because they're being dominant, we're going to go in there, own our space, put pressure on them, drive them away. If they're defensive, we're not going to do any of that. We're going to draw them in and build their confidence, a lot of petting and patience. <laughs> Does that make sense? Yes. So very different approach depending on where that behavior is coming from. And that's what I hope people take away from this video is seeing how to read a horse better and understanding and working from where your horse is at and then building up from there. So this horse came here with, we just tried riding them and the last ride went okay. Before that, the rider came off multiple times to, I'm saying, I wouldn't even think about putting a saddle on her. I mean, I, I wouldn't be saddling this horse for a little while. I'd, I'd just get all this stuff where it's easy and gentle and easy to be around. Right. That's teaching her to be a good, uh, good learner, a good student, mm -hmm. and that will serve her for the rest of her life. Yes. You know, yeah. and it reduces the risk of having a bad ride. I'd rather be prepared than lucky. So thank you guys for tuning in and watching. If you haven't already, hit the subscribe button. We'll see you on the next one.